This house, new to us, was built in 1993 and came with the original laminate countertops along with this ceramic sink that always looked dirty, so we decided to redo it all. We initially got an estimate from a professional contractor who quoted us for almost $9,000 for just the granite slab and then just over $13,000 for the entire project. But thankfully, we discovered stone coat countertops. We decided to save the backsplash for a later date, but altogether the total for the countertops was only $430.97. So we did it. We started off by utilizing our handy dandy surgical drapes that would have otherwise gone in the garbage. This was a project of resourcefulness and we did our best not to waste much, including the countertops themselves. I also assure you that there was no arguing or yelling or disagreements in the creation of this project. But if you do want to embark on this journey, I would suggest allowing yourself at least five days if you want to do it properly. So while I'm finishing the taping and the draping portion, Scott is working on getting that sink out. Even though we said we weren't doing a backsplash, we did try to maintain the integrity of the walls since we don't know exactly when we'll get to that project. Our first team building activity was to remove the sink since it was so heavy and required two people. As I bench pressed it up from the bottom, Scott lifted it up and over from the top. Once we finished taping and draping, we prepped the surfaces to get ready to apply the painter's caulk. I guess the purpose of it is so that when you remove the tape, it creates a nice straight line and seal between the countertops and the walls. Since we were covering laminate, it was recommended to use 80 grit sandpaper at first and then cleaning with glass cleaner. A very wise man once taught me that the key to good adherence is a clean surface. So here we put a bead of painter's caulk around the edges and then let that sit overnight. And the next day we were ready to prime. The primer is basically just paint, so you just add a thin layer and apply as if you would paint any other wall or surface. I do have to point out that if you are planning on using this company, they have so many videos on tips and tricks and different designs on their YouTube channel. What I'm doing here is just scratching the surface to give you an idea of what it was really like to do this project on our own on a budget. When you're applying the primer, it's not super important to have all your brush strokes be in alignment. Since the design is essentially imperfect and this layer will be covered, the point is to just cover it with the base color. So then we let that dry for a couple hours. We actually did this project on Christmas Day, which was a good reminder to help us maintain a positive, peaceful holiday spirit. Once that layer was dry, we sanded it with 220 grit sandpaper and then used our glass cleaner to clean the surface. Then we applied another coat of primer. Since it was Christmas day, we kept getting photos of our friends in matching pajamas because apparently that's the thing to do nowadays. And little did we know, Scott and I unintentionally had matching grout fits on. So here we are documenting that moment and letting our friends know that we are cool too. I actually couldn't believe I wore one of my best outfits while painting. Thank goodness I didn't ruin it.
That second layer of primer takes a little longer to dry, so we let it dry overnight. And then the following day, we used our 220 grit sandpaper again, sanded the surface and cleaned it, and then started on the epoxy. So it's a two-part epoxy mixed at a one-to-one -one ratio. There was a lot of math involved, so I suggest double and triple checking square footage and amounts prior to ordering just to make sure you have enough. They recommend using a drill attachment to mix the solution. And then once that's mixed thoroughly, that is your epoxy. We then add some of the solution to smaller jars for the accent colors. We went with black for the base coat and then copper and white for our accent colors. Then we poured a little bit of the material onto the counters and used a square notch trowel to spread it evenly across the surface. And then we also used our de-linted roller brushes to help spread it across the surface as well. Then, while it's still wet, you're supposed to chop it with a paintbrush. After that, while the material is still wet, we added our accent colors. And this was the fun part. You just kind of do whatever you want and whatever happens, happens. Once we felt like we had a sufficient amount of accent colors, we again then chopped it in with the paintbrush. I really did end up ruining this sweatshirt, so if you do plan to do a project like this, make sure you wear something that you either don't care about getting ruined or wearing a gown or apron or something in order to protect your clothes. As you can see, there's little bubbles in the counters after you chop it, so that's when you take the blowtorch and burn the bubbles out. Stay a few inches away from the surface while you're doing this, and more importantly, be safe while using a flaming torch. The other thing too is if you are trying to maintain the integrity of your walls, be very careful using the blowtorch near the walls because this is what can happen. We clearly did not do a very good job of preserving our walls, but that's okay. And now we let that dry. A couple hours later, while it's still wet, Scott went through and scraped off the drips from the bottom of the edges. And now it's really starting to come together. We allowed that layer to dry for over 24 hours and when we resumed the project we realized that the sink we planned to install didn't fit. It was slightly smaller than the original hole, which is better than having the opposite problem, but I would recommend fitting your sink prior to pouring the epoxy because cutting through the laminate would definitely be easier than cutting through the epoxy as well. 
But this whole project was a learning experience for us both, so we just had to make do with any issues that presented themselves to us. Here I'm just using my handheld jigsaw with a fresh blade to cut a bigger hole. Then we used some 60 grit sandpaper on my handheld orbital sander to smooth it out evenly. Perfect fit, only took like seven tries. So it was time for the clear epoxy coating, which is the same two part mixture as before, mixed at a one to one ratio. I know you're all probably wondering about my hair, makeup and wardrobe routine. I'm clearly into fashion and styles and stuff like that. And you're probably thinking, I can't believe she gets so fancy for a kitchen renovation, but that's just who I am. So this layer you just pour on and spread with your roller brush. And then just like the other coat, you chop it in. And then torch out the bubbles and let it dry. It's probably best to minimize traffic and prevent any pets from entering your work area in order to avoid getting any particles in your counters while they're drying. At this point, we are left with this beautiful, shiny countertop that really does resemble a slab of granite. You can leave it like this if you want, but we decided to add another layer called the Ultimate Top Coat, which gives it more of a matte finish, but also provides a little more durability and protection for the long run. So here we are sanding that clear epoxy layer, and then we're gonna go ahead and apply the Ultimate Top Coat. After we mixed the solution for the ultimate top coat, we applied it like paint, but in a very particular fashion. Again, there's some really great videos on their YouTube channel for the best ways to do this. After we applied that layer, we went over it again with a dry brush and then allowed the whole thing to dry for over 24 hours. This is the part where we pretended to be plumbers. I applied a strip of clear silicone to the bottom edge of the sink where it would meet the counter. And then for yet another team building activity, we carefully lowered the sink down into the now appropriately sized hole. Here, Scott is working on securing the sink to the counters with the provided hardware. We are now at the point where we are acting like we know what we're doing, cutting pipes and making them fit. We did have a few extra expenses, obviously for the sink and a few small plumbing items, as well as some additional little things. But overall, we stayed under $1,000, which is a massive savings from our initial $13,000 quote. We both have very little plumbing experience, so if you are unsure, I would recommend this be the part where you hire someone because a poor plumbing job can definitely make for a messy situation, literally. Now Scott is reconnecting the water lines and hoping for the best. For the finishing touches, I stained a few outlet covers. I had to throw in some Bob Ross action here prior to putting a coat of polyurethane on them. I replaced these yucky looking outlet covers with these nice new ones. So here it is, the final product. 
We are actually extremely pleasantly surprised with the outcome. It was worth the effort and knowing that we saved so much money is just a bonus. If you're looking to do a kitchen remodel on a budget, you can't go wrong with stone coat countertops. Good luck, you got this.